Hello again. Now, there's been a fresh outbreak of violence against civilians in Afghanistan. At least eight people have been killed in a suicide attack that apparently targeted the Indian consulate in the eastern Afghan city of Jalalabad. More than 20 others were injured and police say many of the casualties are children. Well, to further discuss the surge in violence in Afghanistan, I'm now joined live by Dr Bidette Day from the University of Northumbria. Thank you very much for joining us uh, this afternoon. Hi, thank um, you. The latest report by the UN says attacks against civilians have surged almost a quarter during the first half of the year. How much do you think that's reflected in the fact that international forces are handing security to the Afghan authorities? Okay, thank you. Uh, first of all, condolences to the uh, families and uh, uh, to the families of the victims. As we know, that most of them are children, and it's always saddening to see that uh, um, innocent civilians are falling victim to uh, these kind of terrorist attacks. But at the same time, we have to see the bigger picture of the scenario. Um, international forces have been there for quite some time now, but at the same time, we all know that uh, um, the Taliban's uh, are the creation and imagination and organization of CIS. It's no secret anymore. So now. Um, it, now, now, now the what Western uh, forces, particularly NATO, have done has miserably failed over the years. They couldn't actually um, cope with the local requirements. They didn't engage properly with the local communities and never tried to understand their needs and requirements. Instead, they tried to uh, to implement their defined democracy, their de defined ways of uh, um, establishing and running a, 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 a state, uh, which was not liked and appreciated by the normal Taliban. And in fact, um, that created um, sympathy for Taliban uh, Taliban's in this region. So do you think the situation will actually get worse uh, once the international forces have pulled out? I, I think that um, the first thing is you have to actually empower the local administration, the local authority. You have to give them the confidence. It is a colonial mindset to argue that um, the developing countries are less than capable to run their own, to, to solve their own problems and run their own ways. Um, uh, but, but instead, if you um, if you import the Western uh, propagated administration in those regions, that won't going to work out anyway. But at the same time, you have to understand this particular country has been plagued by um, terrorist attacks, uh, civil war, and so forth for the last three decades. So they have to be given time and they have to be allowed to have their own confidence to run their own uh, state. Well, let's just talk a little bit about the, uh, the attack that's happened today. I mean, Indian buildings in Afghanistan have been targeted before. Dozens were killed uh, in two attacks on its embassy in Kabul just a few years ago. Do you think that's coincidence or is there some sort of grudge there? I think that uh, it, it's, it's a part of uh, the organized activity. India epitomizes secularism and democracy in that region, although India has got its own threat from um, uh, extremist religious outfits. But at the same time, India has been um, siding um, proper democracy, um, a rule of law and secularism for more than half a century now. And also we have to understand the role of India in the overall the development in the BRIC, uh, BRIC nations. So, uh, yes, I mean, th th there is something more than just... Uh, coincidence and there must be something more sinister behind it. Dr Bidit Day uh, from the University of Northumbria, thank you very much.